Hi, I'm Miranda. Welcome to the Gospel Explosions Word Ministry of Sardis, Georgia. Our location is 811 Sap Street. Our pastor is the Honorable Bishop Willie Jones Jr. Our service time as it follows Tuesday Bible study at 7.30, Sunday 10 a.m. prayer, 10.15 Sunday school, 11 a.m. morning worship. You are cordially invited to worship with us during our services. Thank you from yours truly, Miranda Pierce of the Gospel of Explosion Word Ministry. Just in the in that powerful name of Jesus I bring you greetings by way of announcement on this Saturday October the 8th at the hour of 5 o'clock p.m. at 811 South Street in the city of Sardis, Georgia. The Gospel Explosion Singers will be celebrating 32 years of good gospel singing. If you're not doing anything, come on down to 811 South Street in the city of Sardis, Georgia at Gospel Explosion Word Ministries and help the Gospel Explosion celebrate their 32nd singing anniversary. That's Saturday coming, October the 8th at the hour of 5 o'clock p.m. Uh, 811 Sap Street. Come on down and let's worship the Lord together. Amen. Glory to God. Our topic today Amen, glory to God, is coming from the book of Matthew, the 24th chapter, the first through the 14th verse. And it is as follows. Every single thing on this earth has an end. There is no such thing as forever on this planet earth. Amen, glory to God. This is why we cannot live our life like everything lasts forever. Nothing lasts forever. Every single thing on this earth has an ending to it. This is the way God planted it. And this is what Jesus was trying to get the disciples to see in the book of Matthew, the 24th chapter, first through the 14th verse. He was trying to get them to see that everything has an ending. And glory to God, the disciples was very impressed with the different churches and uh, how they look, how beautiful they was. But Jesus began to tell them, these things have an end. My kingdom is the only thing everlasting. All of this stuff on earth that you are gazing and uh, admiring, ain't going to be nothing left. No stone upon a stone when I come. Everything as an ending. And the disciples begin to ponder in their mind. That's how we do. We ponder in our mind when the word of God illustrates and tells us things. We begin to research it. We begin to ponder it in our mind. But tell somebody that the word of God is true. And it is the only thing that will last forever. The Bible said... Everything going to fail. Heaven and earth 
but the word of God will last and endure forever. This is what we need to be admiring. The word is what we need to be studying on a daily basis. The word is what we need to wrap our life around. Because if the word is wrapped around our life, then we have everlasting eternal life. But apart from the world, from the word, we will not be able to have that everlasting life. Earth can't give us everlasting life. Only the word. The word didn't come to hurt us. The word didn't come uh, to, 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 amen, praise you the Lord, shake us from living. The word comes to save our soul and it comes to give us eternal life. And this is what Jesus began to tell the disciples. But the disciples start wondering. And they began to say, well, master, they went to him privately. The reason why they went to him privately is because they didn't understand his words. And this is how we do. We don't understand the word and sometimes we won't take in the word because we don't understand. And they begin to say, tell us privately, Lord, when shall the end time be? And Jesus began to tell them, you got to look for a sign. Nobody's watching the signs of the time. Everybody's just living like they're going to live forever. Like they're not going to meet God. Like they're not going to face God. But God began to tell the disciples to watch the signs. God is telling the disciples in our day, watch the signs. Nobody is watching the signs. Everybody is living the way they want to live, doing what they want to do going where they want to go, every way but the house of God. But he told them, you will not be caught unaware if you watch the signs. Jesus taught them to watch the sign. Are you watching the signs today? You must watch the signs and it will show you that we are in the end time. Amen. Glory to God. And the Bible went on to read. And it says here. Amen. Glory to God. And he said here. Take heed that no man deceive you. That's a sign. Don't let nobody deceive you. Don't let nobody tell you nothing apart from this word. There ain't no other route. There ain't no other route. There ain't no other direction. There is no other way around the word. The word is a blueprint. The word is a road map to heaven. Every other road leads to destruction. The Bible said there's a broad and there's a narrow road. The narrow road is what leads to everlasting life. But not many want to follow that narrow road. It's too tight. It's too strict as they say. But the broad road lets you do anything you want to do, when you want to do it, and how you want to do it. But guess what? It's an ending to that. And you still got to meet God. See, you got to meet him, so why not meet him with his word? Either or, you're going to meet him. Whether you intake his word or not, you're going to meet him. See, Jesus is not concerned with us believing and reading the Bible. Because either or, that ain't going to stop the Bible from uh, coming to pass. That ain't going to stop the Bible from illustrating that which Jesus has already written. And the word of God said they're going to try to deceive you. And many people are being deceived. Many people are being deceived sitting right in the house of God. There is no other way right. The Bible says, enter ye in at the straight gate. There is no other direction but straight. And it says here, And ye shall hear of walls and rumors of walls. See that ye be not troubled, for all things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. We are hearing about walls and rumors of walls. Every day we turn on the TV, we are hearing about walls and rumors of walls. Why? That's a sign. Sign number one, people going to try to deceive you. Sign number two, 
We gonna hear about walls and rumors of walls. Sign number three, for nations shall rise against nations and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in divers places. We are seeing all of these things now. That's sign number three. Earthquakes, split note, split note earth, amen, in places that we wouldn't even think that they were split open. They are in, amen, praise the Lord, these places that we say, oh, ain't no earthquake going to come here. Glory to God, but they are happening. Famine, people struggling for food. Glory to God. Amen, glory to God. Pestilence, the diseases is going to begin to walk. We think COVID is something, something terrible than COVID is coming. Why? Because we are in the end time. That's the third sign. Watch the sign. And when these things come, you won't be baffled. You won't marvel. Why? Because the word of God has already spoken. Glory to God. And it said here, and these are the beginning of sorrow. We're going to have three signs. People, that's going to be false prophets. That's going to deceive, try to deceive us. Famines, earthquakes, pestilence. Glory to God. Nations rising against nations. Those are the signs and the beginning of sorrow. Then shall they deliver you up, number four, to be afflicted and shall kill you and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. How many know everybody going to start turning on you, glory to God, because you call on the name of Jesus. Glory to God, your family, your friends, they ain't going to begin to understand your walk with Christ. And this is when you got to make a decision. Glory to God, for God I live and for God I die. Because either or, if you're wrapped up in the word, the Bible says you shall have eternal life. Nothing lasts forever, says God. Everything on this earth has a time and an ending, a beginning and an ending. Glory to God. So you can't live your life like there is no ending. You can't keep on, glory to God, sailing your ship. Like, glory to God, there is no ending. You can't keep on doing the things apart from God like there is no ending. You can't keep on doing what you want to do like there is no ending. There is an ending to everything. Don't let these false prophets fool you. Glory to God, it's time to get your house in order. Glory to God, I'm reminded, glory to God. Of Hezekiah, the Bible said, glory to God, that Isaiah the prophet told him, set your house in order. Glory to God, for you shall die and not live. Some of us, glory to God, running around here like we ain't going to meet Jesus. But oh, yes, we are. Glory to God. Everything on this earth, glory to God, it's got an ending to it. And this is the way God want us to live our life today. He want us to live it wrapped around his word. He want us to enjoy life. He want us to enjoy life. He want us to live life to the fullness. But he also want us to live it with the understanding that nothing lasts forever. Glory to God. The Bible said redeem the time while the evil days draw not now. Glory to God. While you got good health in your body, glory to God. Now is the time, glory to God, to begin to worship the Lord and begin to love on the Lord and begin to praise him for his mighty act, praise him for his goodness, praise him for his mercy, glory to God. Why you are uh, yet closed in your right mind. Glory to God, hallelujah, like never before. God wants us to know, glory to God, every time, everything has its time. Everything has an ending. Glory to God. But you got to make up in your mind, glory to God, that I'm going to mount up and be balanced out when it comes to God. When I leave this old weary world of life, glory to God, then I'll be balanced out. So many are not balanced. They won't go to church, glory to God. They won't go to Bible study. They won't go to prayer meeting. They won't do anything that God ask them to do. All they're doing is what they want to do, glory to God. But the Bible said, glory to God, there's an ending to everything. Glory to God, so many times, glory to God, we won't spend time with God. We won't love on the Lord. Glory to God, but the thing that you run it at, glory to God, it has an ending. The things that you like doing, it has an ending. And you're going to have to have a leaning post. Glory to God, that which you are following, you're not going to be able to lean 
know it. Glory to God, you're not going to be able to lean on drugs, alcohol, fortification, adultery. You're not going to be able to lean on these things. You're going to have to lean on the everlasting arms of God. But glory to God, hallelujah. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs 1, round about the 29th verse, glory to God, it said, I called, but you ignored me. Glory to God, I stretched out my hand and you didn't hear me. He said, but when your calamity come, and it's coming because everything has an ending to it, he said, I will mock you and I will laugh at your glory to God. I will be nowhere for you to find me. He said, seek me while I'm yet to be found. Glory to God, come and have conversations with me. Come and pray to me, glory to God. Get yourself ready, glory to God. The Bible says in the word of God, amen. Glory to God in the Matthew's 25th chapter. It said, lo and behold, there was 10 virgins. 10 virgins mean never been taught. Everybody going to church, glory to God. 10 virgins, glory to God. Five was wise and five was foolish. How many know you can be sitting in the house of God and still be foolish? Glory to God. But the Bible said the bridegroom was coming. Oh, my God. And they went out to meet the bridegroom. But the foolish saw that they didn't have no oil. The foolish saw that they didn't have it together, glory to God. But the Bible said they began to beg, glory to God, for the wise to give them all. And the wise looked at them and said, I only got enough oil for myself, glory to God. It's going to come on a time, glory to God. You're not going to have enough oil for your children. You're not going to have enough oil for your family. You're not going to have enough oil for your friends. Glory to God. All you're going to have enough oil is for yourself, glory to God. And those that do not go to church, those that do not lay at the feet of Jesus, those that do not think that prayer is worthy, they ain't going to have no oil in their vessel. And glory to God, during those times, if you don't have oil, meeting the Spirit of God, you will not be able to meet God in the place that he tell us to meet him in the air. Glory to God, it's going to take that all. This is why Satan, he pushes away from church. Glory to God, he don't want us to go to church. Oh, glory to God, he don't want us to have nothing to do with church because church is the place where you get your all, glory to God. Look to your neighbor, glory to God, and ask them a question. Have you filled up today? Oh, glory to God, every time you go to the house of the Lord, you're filling up on all. Every time you go to prayer meeting, you're filling up on all. Every time, glory to God, you get the morning worship, you're filling up on all. Because when trouble comes, when you're filled with all, my God, then you'll be able to stand the test of time. Glory to God. I remember glory to God. If it had not been for the oil when my daughter died, if my life hadn't have been wrapped up in the word of God, I wouldn't have been able to endure. Glory to God. But because I believed, glory to God, what I read, I believed what I heard when I went to church. When my daughter died, I began to apply it. Amen. Glory to God. I begin to tell myself, glory to God, if your life is right, if your life is hidden in Christ, though you are dead, my God, it won't prevent anything. Glory to God, when Jesus comes, he's going to bring a rat back with him. But I didn't know you got to die in Christ. You got to die, glory to God, wrapped up in the word. Glory to God, the word of God got to be your wine and sheet. The word of God got to be your covering sheet. Even in death, glory to God, you got to be covered over with the word of God. It's got to be your wine and sheet, glory to God. My God, and when the grave try to hold you, it won't be able to do it because the word, my God, will lift you up and glory to God, present you faultless before mighty God. I'm reminded, glory to God, they put Jesus in Joseph new tomb and they really thought they had him, glory to God. But what they didn't know, he was wrapped up with the word. And how many know when you're wrapped up with the word, can't no change hold you. Death can't do nothing with you. It got to let you go, glory to God, because you're wrapped up in the word, glory to God. They thought they had him wrapped up in grave clothes. My God. 
God, but he was wrapped up in the word. Look to your neighbor, say it's a difference between grave clothes and the word wrapped. Glory to God. I'm word wrapped. My God, I believe my daughter is word wrapped. My God, even though death come, my God, it won't be able to hold us. Because the Bible says that God is going to come back with the dead. My God, and this is what kept me. This is what sustained it me because I believe that the word of God, I value the word of God. I treasure the word of God. Yes, I live my life. I live it to the fullness, but I also am balanced out, meaning I just don't pleasure more than I love on God. The majority of my time, glory to God, is spent with God. So I'm balanced when it comes to the word of God. I'm balanced when it comes to going to worship. I'm balanced when it comes to prayer. I'm balanced, glory to God, when it comes to reading the word of God. Look to your neighbor and say, neighbor, you got to be balanced. Glory to God, because if you're not balanced, when this old life begins to rage like a stormy sea, you're not going to be able to endure. So many are not enduring because why? They're not wrapped with the word. They are wrapped with their friend. They rap with their big dog. They rap with their buddies. They rap with alcohol. They rap with fun of vacation. They rap with adultery. They rap with marijuana. They rap with crack, cocaine. They wrapped up. They tied up with the pleasures of this world and they don't have no all. So when tribulation come, glory to God, they're not able to stand. Glory to God, they go ahead and fall because that which they are relying on huh, is not their bed. Huh, my God, but when you rely huh, on the word of God, huh, the scriptures huh, will uphold you. Huh, the scriptures, my God, huh, it will strengthen you. Huh, I said the scriptures huh, will carry you. Huh, the scriptures huh, will bear your burden. Huh, the scriptures huh, will be your lawyer. The scriptures will be your mind regulator. The scriptures will be your heart fixer. My, 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 my God, I feel all right now. You got to be wrapped up with the word of God. Nothing should wrap you up but the word of God. Nothing should tie you up but the word of God. Nothing in this life should shackle you down but the word of God. But so many things are bounding us. So many things are holding us. But it should be the word. I'm reminded of Lazarus. The Bible says death thought he had Lazarus. Glory to God. Death say I got him now. But the Bible said because Lazarus loved the Lord. Lazarus was a friend of Jesus. Look to your neighbor, say a friend indeed. That stick closer than a brother. Nobody else would have win the sinking grave. Glory to God and deliver Lazarus. But because he had a good friend indeed, that stick closer to a that a brother, he was able to go into the grave and free Lazarus. Everybody else was mumbling. Everybody else was crying. But Jesus went on into that old tomb and gave Lazarus a word. This is the thing that I'm talking about. We need to be wrapped up with a friend like Jesus because he won't leave us when nobody else can do anything for us. Jesus, he will fight our battle. Jesus, he'll make the pathway straight. Who am I talking to? I'm talking about the mighty God that we serve. Jesus is a friend indeed. He stick closer, closer than a brother. Whenever you reach out, whenever you call on him, Jesus, he'll come to your rescue. The Bible says, 
lot of the sisters said, how in the world is you going to raise him up? He been dead over four days, and by now he's stinking. Look to your neighbor. Say, I don't care how stink something is. I don't care how dead something is. God can perfume it. Glory to God. The Bible says, Jesus said, He's a sweet perfume. He's a pleasant aroma. Glory to God. Jesus don't care nothing about the stankness. Jesus don't care how things look. He'll bring you out. Yes, he will. He will bring you out. Stay wrapped with the word because it's only the word that's going to deliver you in your time of need, in your time of sorrow, in your time of despair, only the word wrap is going to bring you forth. We love you today. Amen. Glory to God. By way of announcement, the gospel explosion this Saturday will celebrate 32 years of good gospel singing at 811 South Street in the city of Sardis, Georgia. Come one, come all. 811 South Street this Saturday. Glory to God at the hour of 5 o'clock p.m. 5 o'clock p.m. The Gospel Explosion will be celebrating their 32nd singing anniversary. Have a blessed day. And remember, everything on this planet has an ending. God bless you now. When I need